Good afternoon, gamers. I'm in my garage wearing a ski mask, and that means something cool is about to happen. This is the KAC Chainsaw Inspired AR-15 with the handbrake rear grip. I designed this thing a year ago after seeing the KAC Chainsaw and becoming obsessed with it. And now it's in a video game, it's in the new Call of Duty. And there's an anime where a man becomes a chainsaw. Don't we all have that happen? With me, it was a gun. If you have an appendage dangling from your body that when pulled transforms you into a weapon, let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to argue as to whether or not this is California legal. Now what makes this shape so much more ergonomic. You're holding the chainsaw down here, office center, down on the side, unsupported. But you've got this grip right on the top that controls your vertical very well with this as a pivot point. You have good side-to-side -side yaw and pitch control. And most importantly, it's down here away from my face. This AR-15 does the same thing. I've got this as my fulcrum for decent adjustment up and down. I can control that same yaw side to side, and it's down here. That's convenient because I can put this on a sling, and I can just have the weight hanging off my shoulder. I can push down on it. It's going to want to rise. It's going to want to come back. It's going to swing on that sling, and my hand is in a perfect position to push that thing down. So right here, I've got perfect recoil mitigation that I couldn't get firing it from the shoulder. That being said, it's very far away from my face. That's where this nifty little prototype comes in. I've got a camera, and I've got a screen. The screen can go on to an optic bridge, same as my VPNVG, as I've dabbled with night vision for quite some time. And this goes straight on the weapon, right behind the red dot, right behind the front sight. You don't need a rear sight with this because this is a fixed aperture with a constant reference point. But I've got a switch on the back of this to turn it on, and I've got a switch taped to the side of this. I've ordered something smaller, it's on the way, but we're just going to work with this. And all of a sudden, I've got gun vision. The whole fire control group is a pretty simple transfer mechanism. I have a carbine length rifle style tube, like a UTG entry tube. It still has the threaded attachment on the rear for the stock and no rails for a carbine stock. Internally, it takes the same carbine buffer. This fulcrum here is clamped onto that tube and it is adjustable rearward. The trigger pivots in that. This bar right here transfers between the trigger and this trigger. And there's a return spring down here, held captive by the bolt that holds the trigger group's cover on. I have a three finger style trigger here, so you can use your ring finger to cause it to force reset. Paintball style, nice and quickly. The front grip you're seeing here is one that I've just designed due to necessity. I previously had a Zenit Core K7 for a PK machine gun on the front of this. Unfortunately, those are very hard to get now. I've just got this one zip tied on temporarily for demonstration's purpose because this is not the upper for this build. This upper, if you see on my spade grips assembly, is a upper that I like to use for my prototypes. It's modular. This lower receiver has a 440 tap in the back of it here. So it has a set screw holding this D10 pin in place, thus not requiring the end cover plate. So I can change the stock fairly quickly with no tools, no extra tools. I have a heavily modified mag light for this upper receiver that throws shortwave infrared. However, I'm probably going to assemble a launcher to put under this, just like the Knight's Armament Company chainsaw had, I believe, a Spikes Tactical 37mm launcher under it, with no real purpose, but definitely for the looks. The upper receiver I had originally for this was a carbine length upper receiver with a M249 
saw handguard bastardized onto it. Hence the pun, chainsaw. Though it's novel to mention the Knight's Ornament chainsaw is not actually based on the M249 platform saw, but a competing Stoner 96 or a Stoner 63 derivative platform for the saw. Next on the list is this belt-fed AR. This is an AR-15 lower that is crank-operated and belt-fed. I don't have it loaded or assembled here, but you get the picture. This crank runs the trigger, it runs the speed mechanism, and some magic happens on the upper receiver. 